shocking allegations of cops planting incriminating evidence and stealing luxury watches during their raid on a lavish black market casino have just wrecked another anti-organized crime case. The mob reporter here with another bizarre case of cops seriously screwing up something that was at first publicly bragged about as a significant piece of policing. It's disturbing and embarrassing stuff. Let me tell you about it. The original raid and arrest were announced with such fanfare. It looked like something out of a James Bond movie. A $10 million, 53-room, 30,000-square-foot mansion north of Toronto in Canada, surrounded by stone walls and iron gates. The 2.6-acre property was patrolled by guard dogs and roving armed security guards. Inside, under the cathedral ceilings, were 10 bedrooms and 16 bathrooms, professional-grade gambling equipment, and a lot of cash and guns. The guns and the stacks and stacks of cash were needed to run a full-service underground casino as guests enjoyed top-shelf liquor and exotic food, including deer sinew soup and whole shark's fin. The place was called Mackenzie No. 5 Club, and the invitation to its 2019 lunch was in Chinese. Investigators with York Regional Police Organized Crime Enforcement Bureau arrived to break up the action a year later, with a small army of officers in support. That was on July 23, 2020. Among those arrested was Weiwei, a developer who came to Canada from China more than a decade ago, and his ex-wife. The couple jointly owned the mansion. Also arrested was their 25-year-old daughter. Each was charged with running an unlicensed gambling club. From the noisy announcement, a story which I documented in a video I'll link to here, comes a disturbing development. Criminal charges were quietly dropped against three alleged casino kingpins after defense lawyers found evidence of serious police misconduct. So serious, in fact, that if proven, it would amount to criminal offenses. Members of York Regional Police appear to have stolen two watches belonging to Mr. Way while executing a search warrant, and appear to have planted evidence, namely a gun holster, in a room associated with Mr. Way while executing the same search warrant, and the investigative team breached Mr. Way's solicitor-client privilege in their execution of a subsequent search warrant, their lawyer's letter of complaint says. Way's lawyers backed up their claims with a series of photos and videos taken from the police's own investigation. They make a compelling case. Let's start with the wristwatches. For starters, they are inordinately expensive timepieces. One, a Patek Philippe bought in Paris, is worth about $300,000. The other, a gold-faced Jaeger Le Coultre bought in Hong Kong, is valued at over $150,000. That's nearly half a million bucks for two watches. Must be nice. They're eye-catching pieces, and apparently they caught someone's eye. When police raided the mansion, they took video and photos of the scene when they arrived. The police photos show the watches there in Way's bedroom, the Patek Philippe on the bedside table, and the Jaeger Le Cotre in the top drawer, according to the lawyers. After their search, when police were leaving, investigators took exit videos and photos but the watches can no longer be seen. Investigators had seized some items from the bedroom as evidence, including Wei's passport and cell phone, but the watches were not listed among them. Now, when the watches were in the list of items that were seized and tagged, their lawyers asked for them back. The police apparently have no idea where they went. The cops searched the evidence locker, but came up empty-handed. York police, quote, do not have the watches and they cannot account for their disappearance during the search, the lawyers complain. A gun holster did the opposite of the disappearing trick. It appeared 17 hours after photos show it wasn't there before. Police claim a gun holster was found in Way's bedroom during a second search on July 24th. Photos from an earlier search, however, don't show a holster where they supposedly found it, or anywhere else in the bedroom, in fact according to the complaint. Way's lawyers say there is only one conclusion. That holster was planted by police in an apparent attempt to connect Mr. Way to various firearms 
found in other rooms of the mansion. Now their last complaint was the easiest for the court to deal with. It's right in their wheelhouse. When officers searched Wei's family home a week after they raided the casino, they found legal documents, including Wei's retainer agreement with the lawyers he hired to defend his family after the casino raid. Without any special court authorization, the officers photographed the legal documents as part of their probe. That's a legal no-no. In Canada, and in fact many places around the world, what a client talks about with their lawyers should remain confidential. In Canada, it is considered a principle of fundamental justice. With such stark evidence of that breach, it was clear the case against Wei, his ex-wife and his daughter were tainted. The charges were dropped against all three of them. The allegations and theft and planting of evidence were sent to the Chief of York Police by the prosecutors, and an internal probe was launched. Way's lawyers have no confidence it can be adequately addressed internally. Their lawyers want an independent review. York Regional Police didn't deny the allegations when I asked them about this, but they did defend their probe. They said the case has not collapsed, per se. Way entered into a peace bond to be of good behavior, and not to enter unlicensed gambling establishments for two years. He also gave up his interest in the mansion and the $960,000 in bulk cash police found in his mansion during the raid. Plus, police said, charges against the man they now say was their primary focus of the investigation, a 32-year-old who was the alleged manager of the casino, still faces gambling and gun charges. But that man's lawyer told me he expects those charges to be dropped now as well because of the police tainting the evidence in the case. We'll see how that falls. This major probe by York Police now lies in tatters. It's the second major anti-organized crime operation to fall apart in recent months from the same police force. It was only in February that another major anti-mob probe collapsed. A huge operation aimed at one of the major Indrangheta Mafia clans in Canada. Codenamed Project Syndicato, that investigation was the debut of a new anti-mafia police unit by York Regional Police. The police chief himself boasted of arresting a powerful mob boss and more than a dozen underlings of what police called the Filiomani organized crime group originally from Siderno in Italy's Calabria region. Grabbing headlines in that case as well, police seized 27 homes worth $24 million, 23 high-end cars worth $3.5 million, and about a $1 million in cash, along with a remarkable array of luxury goods. The alleged boss named by police lost his house, two Ferrari sports cars, and luxury goods, including a $6,000 bottle of Macallan single malt scotch and a $4,000 bottle of Louis XIII cognac. I document that case and its collapse in several videos here. I'll link to them in the description. They're really worth a watch. No pun intended. After that mafia case fell apart, also because investigators monitored communications with lawyers, police had to give all the stuff back. You know what was included in the luxury goods they needed to return? Boxes of luxury watches. Thanks for watching.